Welcome everyone. My name is Rick Hill. I work with NQA, National Quality Assurance, which is a certification body. And I'm going to present a presentation called Is Sustainability the New Quality? And I should begin by saying that if uh, any of you listening to this was looking for a presentation about sustainability in the sense of uh, sustaining the gains achieved by a, uh, an improvement project, like the C control part of the MAIC from the Six Sigma project, I'm not talking about that kind of sustainability. I'm talking about the big sustainability, which we'll move right into. Um, in detail, the, uh, the objectives, what we're going to be talking about today, I want to uh, help you to understand more broadly what sustainability means and how it ties into quality, hence the title, Is Sustainability the New Quality? I want to uh, share with you uh, a specific sustainability assessment model and we'll look at that in detail to give you uh, an example of one way of looking at the various elements that make up sustainability. And uh, then I want to talk about the business benefits of sustainability. And we'll look at some, some good uh, case studies that show real life examples of how those benefits have been achieved by various uh, sustainability initiatives. So if you're ready to begin, I am, let's go. And so what I'm talking about today is, could be expressed as uh, two kinds of green, if you will. And they, uh, they, they both relate to, they have a, a, an etymological relationship. I'm kind of a, a word geek, and I'm interested in you know, etymology and the study of the, you know, the roots, the origins of words, where language comes from, how it develops. And so there's, I'm interested in things like, there's this Greek root word, uh, echo or echo, uh, which in Greek means house or household. So going from that, there's a couple of words, familiar words that come from that. One is economics, which you might uh, interpret as the success of our business household, uh, where, the, where, the, where the company lives in an organization where financials would have a sense. Uh, but obviously, you'll, you'll realize that eco also gives us ecology, which could be uh, ex expressed as the well-being of our shared community home our world home, the, the places where, where we live, our community, our planet Earth. So two kinds of green, uh, greenbacks or our green planet, which is actually more blue because of all the water, but you know what I mean, green in the sense of uh, environmental, environmental green. So going from that, so let's, let's ask the question, so what is sustainability? We'll look at some definitions which I picked up from a few different places. A uh, first definition of sustainability is meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, which I think is very elegantly expressed. Um, if you do a search on definitions of sustainability, you'll see that or uh, various uh, permutations or combinations of it quite a few places. Here's a second definition of sustainability, a strategy that prioritizes the long-term survival of a business. So not so much ecology as economic we're talking about now, the economic sustainability of a business, its uh, ability to um, stay in operation for the long run. And here's the third definition. State of the global system, including environmental, social, and economic aspects, in which the needs of the present are met without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So. Um, I'm sure it's apparent to you that this third definition actually combines the essence of the second one and the first one. So it's, it's looking at three aspects of sustainability, uh, the environmental and the social, think corporate social responsibility, and the economic. So both of our kinds of green and really the, uh, that, you know, altogether there, there are three elements, you know, the environment, the social, and the economic which all play in together into a, a comprehensive or a, a holistic uh, concept of sustainability. So these three things give us uh, something you may well have heard of, which is called the triple bottom line, which is a business framework that has those three parts, the social, the ecological, and the economic, which we can express as the three Ps, people, planet, profit. Uh, which, which all play together. You can't address only one 
you can't address only one. You can look at profit only, which I guess some businesses have traditionally done, but it's it's not a sustainable, truly sustainable way of uh, uh, strategizing for a business. Really, ideally, we want to address all three, which is what we're talking about today. So let's move on from that now. Um, but the question comes up, how does sustainability relate to quality, which is the question we came in with. So let's look at that. So for instance, let's turn to the ISO 9000 family of standards and look at what, if anything, they have to say about sustainability. So if we look at ISO 9001 in its introduction, uh, it mentions that the adoption of the QMS is a strategic decision. If it wants to improve its overall performance and provide a sound basis for sustainable development uh, initiatives. So there's that word sustainable. Sounds like we're thinking mainly in the economic uh, perspective, but perhaps not. We may be talking about the more holistic kind of sustainability. Let's look at some other things. There's uh, ISO 10014. That's one of that whole family of ISO 10000 and so on. Uh, guidance documents that support ISO 9000 and ISO 9001. Uh, this document is specifically about guidelines for realizing financial and economic benefits from quality management. And it too talks, it talks about uh, methods and tools that enable the sustainable success of an organization. And here's another from ISO 9004, um, which is again that supporting document that sort of takes a, a larger, broader perspective on quality management and goes beyond the, you know, the letter of the law in ISO 9001 and looks at it in a broader context. And the very title of the document is uh, Guidance uh, for Achieving Sustained Success. Well, what kind of sustainability are we talking about? Let's look at some other standards, uh, other sustainability standards, which were much more specifically about the the green aspects of sustainability that we're familiar with, the environmental and the social. For instance, I'm sure pretty much everybody is familiar with ISO 14001, which is the Environmental Management System Requirement Standard. And then there's also um, ISO 26000, uh, which is Guidance on Social Responsibility, which is that people aspect. Then too, there's the fairly recently released ISO 50001 about uh, energy management system. And then here's one which you may not be familiar with. It's called R2. R2 meaning responsible recycling, uh, a standard for uh, electronics recyclers. So you can see across this uh, range of standards, we've got the, the people and the planet aspects of that triple bottom line kind of covered. Um, but again, the question comes up, these aren't quality standards. These are standards for other types of management systems. So how does the sustain, sustainability and quality tie in together? Well, have you ever heard of a standard called TL9000? TL9000 is uh, similar to the aerospace, aerospace's AS9100 or uh, automotive's IATF 16949, formerly TS 16949. It's a quality management system standard. It's based on ISO 9001. It adds uh, a large number of additional requirements which address the specific quality needs of uh, what's known as the ICT sector, the Information and Communications Technology sector. Formerly, um, formerly telecom, but the, 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 the scope of the standard is considered to have been enlarged a bit to, uh, to cover you know, some of the other companies because the the lines between telecom and other types of businesses have been blurring somewhat over the past while. This standard is owned by an organization called the uh, Telecommunications Industry Association, the TIA. And sustainability uh, is referred to in many places in TL9000. Let me, let me show you. In a note to the clause about uh, quality planning, it mentions that factors that may be considered for planning include, among others, sustainability. In a note to the uh, clause, the requirement that talks about a life cycle model for the organization's products and services, talk about taking into consideration sustainability practices, and then it lists some specific types of things that should be considered. 
uh, resource consumption, disposal, end of life treatment. A note uh, in the design and development section that when we're talking about uh, DFX plans as part of the overall planning for a design and development project, in addition to things like uh, design for manufacturability, design for reliability, you should consider also a plan for design for sustainability. And then in the requirement for design and development requirements, one of the uh, categories of requirements which should be considered are things to do with environmental and sustainability. And now if, you, uh, if you're kind of uh, smiling when you see the word should there and thinking, well, that means you, you don't actually have to do that, I should mention that in a TL9000 standard, the word should has a special meaning. It means you, the organization is required either to do what the requirement says or it has the option of doing something different as long as it still meets the intent of the requirement. So in this case then, your design and development requirements, they will cover relevant environmental sustainability requirements or if they don't, they'll meet that intent in some other manner. So it's it's pretty, pretty hard should. And then there's another requirement which has been added in the most recent version the most recent revision of the requirements handbook for TL9000, which is calling for sustainability assessment. The organization should ass assess the status of its sustainability efforts as appropriate to its organization, products, and services. So there's that should again, but you know, the way TL9000 defines the word should, that means you know thou shalt perform a sustainability assessment or do something else that meets the intent of a sustainability assessment. So it's not an option. It's a requirement. It's a hard requirement. And uh, it's been there since the, um, the latest revision of the TL9000 standard came out, which was in 2016, uh, incorporating the changes that were in ISO 9001 in 2015. And a, no a note to this requirement uh, indicates, suggests that there's a sample sustainability assessment model available at the TL9000 website. And uh, that's a model that we're going to look at shortly, so you have an idea of the kinds of things that are being considered um, as part of a sustainability assessment. So speaking then of sustainability assessment tools, there are uh, uh, many, many available. A quick uh, you know, Google around the web will uh, turn up a number of them. Here are some. Probably one of the best known ones is Ecovadis. Uh, which covers 21 criteria across four themes, as you can see, the environment, fair labor and human rights, ethics, sustainable procurement. So definitely it's got the people and the planet um, aspects of sustainability covered. Um, when I've been uh, around performing um, audits of organizations, and this frequently comes up that their customers have asked them to uh, perform Ecovadis assessments. Um, and this is, this is something you see often when, a, when an organization is concerned about the sustainability uh, status of the organization in its supply chain. It uses Ecovadis as a means of assessing that sustainability status. A couple of other tools that I turned up in a look around the web, uh, one called S-Core, or perhaps we say SCORE, or perhaps we say SCORE, I don't know, um, talking about sustainability in competency, opportunity, reporting, evaluation, different activities. Uh, it looked interesting. It had, had some good stuff in there. And then another one I found uh, called Future Fit Business Benchmark. And this one's free. It's kind of an open source uh, sustainability assessment tool, uh, which also you know, definitely has a tart in the right place and is uh, covering a lot of good aspects. And so uh, if you're interested in any of these information about them, uh, you won't have any trouble finding it on the web. The one I would like to focus on today is the one that the TL9000 standard refers to because it's a tool that comes from the TIA, the Telecommunications Industry Association, and they simply call it their assessor, the TIA assessor. There's the uh, um, link to where you can find it on the web, simply tiaassessor.com if you want to go and have a look at it, uh, maybe even purchase it for your use. The assessor um, claims that it offers rapid self-assessment, 
benchmarking against industry best practices, and feedback, including prioritized improvement recommendations. So it is, it is a pretty good tool, a pretty useful tool. Um, it, um, when you purchase it, uh, as part of the price, you get, uh, you get a certain number of uh, times you can use it, a certain number of instances would be the word I guess I'm looking for. I think, I think maybe 10, if you get a package of 10 with your, with your purchase, so that you could use it either, say, if, you, if your company has several different locations or business units or whatever, and you want to let each of them do their own sustainability assessments so that you compare one against the other, uh, you could do that. Or alternatively, if you want to do, say, successive annual snapshots of your business and see how your sustainability status is improving, uh, year over year, then this would let you do that with the different um, instances that you get with the purchase of the package. So let's dig in and have a look at what the assessor actually looks like, what it contains. So it's a 10-step sustainability model, and uh, you can see the, the 10 steps there, and they're, they fall into uh, three different categories. There are three which are um, in the operational dimension for organizational, and then another three the commercial side of things. And let's take a, a quick walk through the TAN and we'll give you just a, a brief summary of the essence of what the model is looking for in each of these 10 areas. And if you want to get more details about what each of the 10 areas is looking for and what's, uh, what's involved there, then simply go to that website, tiaassessor.com, and you can dig into the details uh, um, at a deeper level. But briefly, so um, the first uh, step, environmental management, obviously it's talking about minimizing waste and emissions to the environment. And not only doing that, but then measuring your performance in doing that um, against standards such as ISO 14001, the Environmental Management System standard. The second element is resource efficiency optimi optimization, so optimizing the use of materials, of energy, of water, of resources in general, and, you know, in general, uh, definition of efficiency, producing the maximum output with the minimum input, in this case with a minimum resource input. The third element is about carbon footprint and ozone depletion, and so it calls on the organization to measure and to reduce its carbon emissions arising from, which can arise from a wide range of sources, uh, fuel and energy, business travel, operational waste, downstream leased assets, and you know, there, there are more items in the list. Uh, business travel I can definitely relate to because for the past 10 years, uh, first as a, as a freelance consultant in quality and doing a lot of uh, training and auditing, and then in the last uh, four years uh, working with NQA and still doing a lot of auditing and traveling to conferences and meetings and so forth, I've logged a lot of miles. In, uh, in airplanes and rental cars and so forth. And uh, you know, when I look in, I don't know if, if any of you are familiar with an app called TripIt, which I, which I rely on for organizing my, my travel uh, plans. And uh, TripIt keeps, you know, keeps track of all your travel activities and can show you the, the history of where you've been and how many miles you've traveled over the time you've been using TripIt. And it's appalling when I look at my trip at records and see how many miles I've logged in the last 10 years, I'm like an eco-terrorist in terms of my, my carbon footprint, I'm afraid to say. So business travel, that's a big one, along with, along with these other things. Now getting into the next section, uh, the operational part, the fourth element is about corporate and social responsibility. And so here we're talking about compliance, laws, ethical standards, norms, and uh, generally activities that improve the quality of life for the organization's workforce, for their families, for the community that the organization lives within, and for society, for society at large. The next uh, is about supply chain management. And so this is, uh, as I was talking about earlier, uh, if you're an organization, you don't want to just have sustainability working for yourself. You want to drive sustainability throughout your supply chain too, so you're confident that that you're you're getting the maximum you know the maximum benefits of your sustainability activities. So it's not just you doing it, but 
because you can get all your supply chain doing it too, then obviously you're making a much bigger difference to the people in the planet. And ultimately it comes through on the profit side too, and we'll see how that works. So um, evaluating your supplier's approaches to climate change, to resource scarcity, um, enforcing the supply chain code of conduct that's applicable to sustainability, including uh, corporate social responsibility as well as environmental or ecological aspects. Um, I know um, more than one organization, and the one I know for, for sure, for sure, is uh, AT&T has bought uh, many copies of the TIA assessor and sent them to many of their suppliers in the supply chain uh, to get them to fill them out so that they have their key suppliers self-assessments from the assessor uh, as a way of monitoring how, how successful they've been at driving sustainability down the supply chain. AT&T is very serious about sustainability, as many big companies are. Moving on again, another uh, uh, external uh, approach um, aspect of the sustainability um, concern. This is talking about stakeholder engagement. Uh, or if you like in uh, ISO 9001 kind of terms, uh, interest of parties and their needs and expectations. Here we're talking about transparent, responsive, two-way conversations about CSR, corporate social responsibility, and sustainability between the organization and its, and its stakeholders, its interested parties, and mutual understanding of potential issues that come up for them in the area of sustainability. And so that's... Uh, kind of being awareness of and um, communication about sustainability between the organization and its interested parties, so on the external side, and then there's an internal aspect to that too, uh, organizational engaging capability. And here the organization is supposed to evaluate the percentage of its senior managers and delivery managers who received CSR or sustainability training and have sustainability objectives, like what a great concept that uh, managers, you know, as part of their performance object objectives, that some of those should actually be sustainability related objectives. I think that's, that's an awesome idea, well worth, well worth doing. And now let's move on to the last section, this um, commercial section, and there's some very interesting things here, things that can make a real big impact from a sustainability point of view. So starting with eco-design. Developing the products in the first place from the design perspective that require minimal resources and energy during their life cycles with opportunities for materials recovery and recycling at end of life. Next is end-to-end -end delivery, so considering all of the activities, all the materials, all the resources that are required to deliver products and services, beginning with production, going right through to end of life. So this includes considerations of design and development. So we're talking about you know, BFX plans, design for sustainability, uh, and logistics and packaging and after-sales support. All of these things. What's the you know if you're just sending out trucks to perform after-sales support activities? Um, you know, those trucks have a carbon footprint too. They're using energy. They're using resources. They're emitting uh, greenhouse gases, perhaps. You know your exhaust, so that's a consideration as well. So quite a few aspects to this. And finally, this is uh, this is an interesting one, the circular economy life cycle, or as I've uh, heard it referred to simply as a single word, circularity, which is strategic and sustainability action plans across product lines to keep resources in use for as long as possible, seeking to recover and recycle them once the maximum value has been reached. So this is as opposed to the standard um, one-way path where you, you make the product, you sell it to the customer, the customer uses it, when the customer's you know, breaks, when the customer's tired of it, they throw it in the garbage. And it's all one way. And there's no, no recovery, no reuse, obviously not a very sustainable model to change that linear one-way uh, life cycle into a circular life cycle where we have reuse, we have recovery, we have recycling, uh, responsible recycling as a, as a last resort. And I was uh, happy to read 
just the other day um, results of a, a study, sort of a white paper that said that circularity has now become uh, an established thing. A survey of organizations and their leadership suggested that uh, there's a lot of awareness now of circular economy and a lot of organizations working to try to accomplish that, that it, it really has traction now, it has critical mass. And so this is something that's moving forward and it's really good news. So that is the 10-step TIA assessor model. So now let's return to our question. Is sustainability the new quality? So let's go back to the standards again and see some more things that are in there. So in ISO 9000, um, in the scope, right in the very, you know, right up near the beginning, we've got this statement that quality management is for organizations that are seeking sustained success through the implementation of a quality management system. So implementing a QMS is going to give an organization sustained success. Well, what do we mean by sustained success? So let's look in ISO 9000 in its definition section. Sustained success is the success of an organization over a period of time. But look at uh, this first note that sustained success emphasizes the need for balance between economic and financial uh, considerations and also social and ecological elements. So people, planet, profit, all those three aspects play into the concept of sustained success, which comes from the implementing a QMS. And then look at the second note as well, that sustained success um, has a relationship to the organization's interested parties, including you know, preeminently customers as well as others. And we were talking about that before when we were looking at the assessor model that and that uh, external and that stakeholder engagement. We were looking at talking with the interested parties and about CSR, about sustainability, and uh, having communication about that and understanding of any issues and you know, resolution of those issues going forward. So. We, t we tie these things together, and, 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 and I think there's more to come. There's one more. So again, in ISO 9000, if we look at its section talking about quality, we see that you know, quality has to do with fulfilling the needs and expectations of customers and other relevant interested parties. So tie all these things together. The sustained success of an organization comes through the implementation of the QMS, or at least QMS will help to achieve sustained success. Sustained success. Um, is connected with the three aspects of sustainability, the, you know, the social responsibility, the ecological and the economical, the people, the planet, the profit. And that relates to its interested parties, including customers. So our, an organization's customers and its interested parties are interested and concerned with the sustained success of an organization and not only with its economic success, although of course your customers you know, having gone through the, to the trouble of um, selecting you as a supplier and qualifying you and approving you and adding you to their approved vendors list, now that they're, they're happy with you and the products and services you provide, they want you to stay in business so you can keep providing them with that, those good products and services, of course. But they are interested not only in the economic aspect, they're interested in the ecological and the social aspect as well, all three of those aspects of sustainability, this all ties together. So the way it seems to be, the bottom line is that quality is business, is sustainability. Quality, interested parties, sustained success, they all tie together. Quality helps to lead to sustained success. Interested parties are interested in the quality of the organization, they're interested in sustained success of the organization, and sustained, sustained success has to do with sustainability in all its three aspects, people, planet, profit, the social, the ecological, the economic. So my take on this is that, yes, sustainability is the new quality. Sustainability is quality. Quality is sustainability. If you ask your customers if they're interested only in quality but not in sustainability, the answer is no. They want it all. They want it all, and it all, it all ties together. So um, 
if you're with me so far and you uh, agree that sustainability is a good thing, which uh, I hope no one would want to deny, obviously the question comes up if you're going to go to your, uh, you know, to um, your CEO, you know, your C-suite in Mahogany Row and uh, tell them you need to get more involved with sustainability because it's equates quality and because our, what our customers and other interested parties want, obviously they're going to ask, well, what's it going to cost me? What does sustainability cost? Well, here's the good news. Sustainability doesn't cost. It pays. The same as quality does. This is something personally I've always said about quality. It's been kind of my slogan. Quality doesn't cost. It pays. And we can say the same thing about sustainability. And I'm going to demonstrate some details of that in the case studies that uh, I'm going to share in a minute. But um, generally speaking, when we're talking about sustainability, both the top and the bottom line benefit in a, a whole range of ways through improved operational effectiveness and efficiency. Sustainability helps to achieve that. And cost reduction, energy costs in particular, and energy costs plenty, and uh, many sustainability uh, initiatives just, you know, strike right at the heart of, of energy costs and reduce them. Your supply chain spend reduction. If, you, if your suppliers uh, have, you know, are engaged with sustainability and they're, they've taken it on board and doing sustainability actions, then they're saving money too, and that potentially saves you money. Your defect reduction, quality improvement. We'll, we'll see examples of how that happens. Your CSR risk elimination. Your customer engagement and relationship management. Uh, as a member, this you know, sustainability is something that, cust that customers are concerned about, and your organization's other interested parties as well. Product and service innovation, which drives sales growth. And if you want to move into those you know, those last uh, three elements of the uh, the TIA assessor model, those uh, commercial aspects, the eco design the uh, delivery, end-to-end -end delivery, the circular life cycle, then those, those call for some innovation in your products and services to make that happen. But that drives sales growth as well. Your grant enhancement, because sustainability matters to your customers. So let's look at some examples. Here's a simple one. Water dispensers. There's an organization whose water fountains were nearing the end of life. They replaced them not with new water fountains, with bottle filling stations. So what were the results of that? It encouraged water bottle reuse. It also encouraged employee wellness through hydration. So it had an environmental and a social aspect to it. And encouraging the reuse of reusable water bottles. Um, at the time that uh, I heard about this activity from the beginning of the project to then, we figured that over 50,000 single-use plastic bottles had been diverted from recycling and landfill. A great thing. Another example, and this one's really interesting, having to do with Chinese workers. They have a huge problem with retention, uh, employer retention in China, and uh, particularly around Chinese New Year, uh, when they take their you know, their big break for the Chinese New Year, and everybody goes home to their their hometown that they came from. A lot of them never come back to the company they're working for because they're just not committed to it, and you know they didn't. They run crazy about the jobs, so they just don't come back, and they, you know, go and do something else. And so it can be, you know, a real disaster for the organization because the the the, the degree of attrition is can be huge. But when this Chinese company introduced a real good sustainability program, that increased employee morale because the company has has bought into sustainability and has got a good program in place that. Uh, that engages the workforce, it, it feels better to work for a company like that. So employee morale is better, and the result of that is improved employee retention. And so this led to a range of benefits, well, uh, reduced recruitment, training, supervision costs, because you don't have to hire as many new workers, you've still got your same old workers. And because of that, you have more skills and knowledge is retained in those existing workers. The result of that is on the one hand you have greater productivity because you've still got the same people who know what they're doing and aren't you know, learning it over again from scratch. 
And consequently, also because they know what they're doing, there are fewer defects, less scrap, less rework. And how big are the improvements of this? Well, look, look at these numbers. Productivity improved by 53%. Uh, cost of poor quality decreased by 60%. 60%. And recruitment, training, supervision costs to bring in new employees to replace the ones that have left. Savings of 80%. That's incredible. That's incredible. And all this comes from introducing a sustainability program. But you can imagine what kind of uh, you know, savings to the bottom line these, these savings in these various areas uh, uh, you know, bring about. Uh, not to mention the uh, you know, presumed increase in customer satisfaction if you have greater productivity, um, better quality, and have better on-time delivery, better quality product or services when you get there. It's all good. It's all good. Another case study, and this is a popular one, LED lighting, simply replacing old fluorescent tubes with LED lighting. Uh, in the partic this particular case study, the organization reduced its energy costs by $66,000 a year. Excuse me. It also improved the quality of the illumination, and it reduced the air temperature by 2 degrees. So I think they probably, their uh, reduced energy costs came not only from the, you know, the lower cost of LED lighting, uh, but also probably their cost for air conditioning were reduced too because it just didn't get quite as warm in there from because the lighting wasn't heating it up the same. The improved illumination meant that uh, they were able to achieve improved workmanship because employees were just able to see what they were doing better. It's a, it's a much brighter, better quality light. Also, the LED lighting, the, that different quality of light it produce, produces makes, makes employees feel better. Those old-fashioned fluorescent tubes, they feel, you know, at, at, at least kind of depressing to work under. That, that odd colored light and the, and the nature of it actually makes some people feel a little unwell. Those that kind of light. The LED lighting doesn't do that because it is so nice and white and bright and clear. And the improved illumination also makes a better impression on customers. Um, I can give you a couple of... Uh, examples of this. One is, uh, you know, I had the experience of uh, going to audit a company that was uh, doing a retrofit. They were replacing their fluorescent tubes with LED lighting. And they, at the time I was there to perform the audit, they had the new LED lights in one half of their production and warehouse area, still had the old fluorescent tubes in the other half. And my gosh, the contrast, the difference between the lighting with, with the old tubes versus the LED lighting, it was really dramatic, really dramatic. It's, it's the, the new lighting is just so much better all around. And another story I heard about um, a young man, uh, I know he's a, a relative of my wife, he works for um, Toronto Hydro. Uh, hydro is what we Canadians you know, call electricity to power because so much of our power is hydroelectric power. So Toronto Hydro has a program uh, that he's part of where they work with some of the big uh, companies and organizations in Toronto to help them develop strategies to reduce their energy use. So with the result that their uh, the company's energy costs go down and uh, Toronto Hydro then uh, get more you know, usage of their existing system and don't need to be continually you know, upgrading and enlarging it because of increasing energy needs. And um, he, he I uh, was speaking to one company that, you know, like the other story I just told you, uh, they were in the progress of uh, changing over from their old fluorescent lighting to LED lighting. And um, this particular company, they were a contract manufacturer. They produced product for their customers, and they had two production floors. And one production floor still had the old fluorescent lighting, but the second production floor now had the new LED lighting in place. And so one day they brought a prospective customer in to get the um, get the tour, get the uh, the good old dog and pony show and the whole deal. And uh, they toured them through the uh, first production floor where the old fluorescent tubes were still there in the ceiling. And then they took them to the second production floor where the new LED lighting was in place. And the customer said to them in that second floor, um, when you manufacture our product, we want you to make it on this production floor. 
because they just like to look at that lighting so much better. So it makes a much more positive impression on customers. And uh, that's money in the bank, if nothing else is. Another lighting-related case study having to do with light standards. Uh, 120 light pole units at this particular uh, organization. And in four of their parking lots and the parking garage, they replaced them with uh, you know, new LED lighting. So again, huge savings in energy usage, um, reduced by half. Brightness of the light increased by 65%. Uh, maintenance costs nearly eliminated. Because with uh, LED lights, I mean, you're not replacing bulbs all the time. They just, they just last and last, uh, I, semi indefinitely. The, the reduction in energy uses, they figured they were saving $10,000 a year in energy. And the increased brightness meant that uh, nighttime safety and security in these parking areas was, in, was increased. So this uh, sustainability re uh, retrofit has a positive effect not only from the economic perspective and the ecological perspective, but also from the people perspective because it was um, felt better to the staff and you know, it was actually better for the, the safety of the staff. So it hit all three aspects of sustainability. Here's the last case study, and this is one that I really like. Uh, this because this d demonstrates the benefits of the circularity of a circular life cycle. So this is uh, about a, a, a um, ICT service provider that provided TV set-top boxes to its end customers. Uh, originally, it was a one-way product life cycle. So the uh, product, uh, the set-top box was designed. It was manufactured offshore. The service provider sold it to the end customer. and when the end customer, when the, the box re reached its end of life, the end customer landfilled it. So made, sold, used, thrown in the garbage. The classic linear life cycle, the one-way life cycle, not a good thing. So this organization then applied some innovation and changed this to a circular life cycle. You still have the design, you still have the manufacture, offshore, naturally, which is another matter. But the innovation was to change from a sales model to a rental model. And so they would, the service provider would rent the set-top box to the end customer when, uh, if the, set, when the set-top box reached the end of life uh, or you know, uh, started to malfunction or when the end customer wanted to upgrade to a newer kind of set-top box they would return the set-top box rather than just landfilling it and where it would be refurbished and, and then used over again, sent to another customer or you know, potentially back to the same customer, if it's whatever, to another customer. Um, or, you know, worst case, it would be responsibly recycled materials recovered from it and used you know, perhaps in the next generation. So this um, innovation, changing from sales to the rental model and then refurbishing rather than discarding, um, achieved significant savings and benefits for the service provider and for the world, if you will. Their, the cost of the product was reduced by 30 to 40 percent. The service provider was able to reduce its raw material risk because it wasn't buying and bringing in as many products because it could start to reuse them rather than just having to bring in a new one every time one conked out. And uh, the overall carbon footprint was reduced by more than half, greater than 50%, um, in spite of the fact that the product was coming from offshore. Also, the service provider enjoy, enjoyed increased margins on the product and better customer retention. This, uh, this rental versus sales scheme worked better for the customers. They liked it better. So it was all good. Uh, hit all the all the sustainability bases, or at least you know, certainly the, uh, the planet part and the profit part, all good. So um, that's been a little bit of a whirlwind trip through sustainability. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's uh, review now what I was hoping to uh, recover, what you should have obtained. So how did we do? Did we, did we obtain a broader understanding of what sustainability means? 
how it ties into quality. This was really the key thing I was trying to um, reinforce. You, get, you got a, a good detailed description of uh, one sustainability assessment model. Not the only one, but just the one that I'm most familiar with, so I offered it to you in the hopes that you would find it uh, uh, valuable to understand and to give you some uh, insight into some of the many kinds of considerations that fall into the overall picture of sustainability. And then we talked about the business benefits of sustainability, which are many, and we looked at a number of real-life case studies to show some particular sustainability activities and the kind of benefits that they were able to read. So I hope uh, I hope you uh, appreciated and enjoyed that. I hope uh, I was able to convince you that, yes, sustainability is the new quality. And I hope you'll be able to uh, take that with you and uh, apply some of this in your own organization um, as, as quality professionals. And specifically for you auditors who are uh, looking at this, um, Think about this, you know, you know, I know, you know, as an auditor myself, um, there's sustainability aspects like that carbon footprint of all that business travel I mentioned. This is something that, that you can think about and perhaps take back to your CBs that you work for for them to think about for the sustainability aspects of what they do. And this is also something that uh, could um, provoke some interesting conversations with clients if you visit, talk with them, not just about you know, strict quality by which quality uh, in the literal ISO 9001 requirements kind of sense, but in the broader sense of the sustainable success of their organization, where sustainable success incorporates people, planet, and profit, all the three aspects of the holistic definition of sustainability, and which is of significance to their interested parties, including their customers and others. Uh, an interesting thing to talk about them with, looking at the larger picture of quality and their quality management system. So I just want to now thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, uh, listening to this presentation. And uh, on behalf of myself and NQA, I'll say goodbye. <laughs>